Welcome to Life in Color, the Square Drop Camp of Build. This is part seven, and we've got an interesting show with everything from creating a slide for the fridge to putting the roof on and a fan on the roof, galley lights, uh, checker plate on the front of the trailer. And without a further ado, let's get into it. I bought a four foot by eight foot sheet of checker plate aluminum for the uh, front of the trailer. Uh, there's it, we drive a lot in the winter time and there's a lot of gravel on the roads and we do up and down gravel roads so I thought it'd be a good idea to protect the front of the trailer. Uh, the alu panel that I am using for the rest of the trailer is not that strong so I'm kind of trying to protect it with the uh, with the uh, checker plate. I uh, had used uh, a tape called tuck tape which is a really really heavy duty uh, tape for uh, taping in the insulation and I really wanted to make an airtight barrier. The only problem was I was concerned about the um, adhesion using the VHB tape to stick the checker plate onto the front of the trailer and I realized pretty rapidly that I was just better to wipe the, the, the uh, tuck tape with uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol and then apply the VHB. Uh, I used a lot of VHB on the front of the trailer. Uh, you want to make sure that you're getting really, really good adhesion. And, um, you know, this stuff's brutally expensive. It's $150 a roll. I think I ended up using close to two rolls on the, on the whole trailer, including the roof. Once I'd uh, taken off the tape, I uh, uh, wiped down the back side of the checker plate with, again, with some isopropyl on the rag, just to make sure that I, I had a really uh, fingerprint-free... Uh, um, you know, uh, connection, and then of course I touched it with my fingers while I was putting it on. But that's, you know, I, I think I did an okay job. It stuck pretty well, and uh, you'll see that in a second here when I go to, go to put it on. It's sort of straight. Um, it's kind of a tricky, uh, tricky to tell. Uh, I did have to gouge the bottom a bit to make it fit uh, with a, uh, a flapper disc on, a, on an angle grinder. Here you can see that the uh, alu panel had bowed away slightly from the uh, front corner and what I did was I used a drill, drilled in 1 8 inch and then I applied 1 8, one -eighth inch um, pop rivets and I uh, popped them into place and I think I put three or four along that leading edge side. I really want to make sure that I keep those, uh, those corners closed there. I was just making sure I got a really good penetration on that. Uh, uh, pop rivet and I actually did go back to the store and buy some slightly longer ones to make sure that I got full penetration and a good on a good pull back. So it worked out great. Here you can see I'm test fitting the uh, stainless steel. It's still got the plastic on it and we probably test fitted it four times. Then I uh, got the measurements with Jen to put the uh, the cuts in for the sink and it's quite a big sink. It's a square stainless steel sink as well so I think it looks really impressive uh, and you'll see that in a couple videos. I just used a, uh, a cutting blade on an angle grinder and just took my time and was very careful and uh, cut it out. Peeled off the plastic and then here you can see I'm aligning the, uh, the uh, uh, tap and uh, I did have to go back in with some Dremel bits that I bought and uh, widen those holes once I'd done it to make sure that I had uh, connection room for the, uh, uh, the lines to connect the uh, hot and cold running water to the sink. Uh, I'm just widening it up and you can see a shiny new uh, Dremel bit and probably in 10 minutes it was just completely pulverized by the, uh, the stainless steel. That stuff is tough. I had two extra LED lights and I knew I was going to use do something in the galley and so I chose to put them in there. I just used a simple, I think it was a two and a quarter inch hole saw and they just literally pop right into place and then I had to thread the wires back to the uh, to the panel. Um, here I just drilled a couple of holes to hold up the uh, ceiling. Uh, I did have some VHB on it but it seemed to be letting go over time and that just came to the fact that gravity was doing its thing so a couple of screws helped that out. The leftover checker plate, Jen uh, had got her eyes on that and decided she was going to make some brackets for the slide for the uh, fridge. So here she's just ripping away on it and um, yeah, I think uh, you know she's getting quite confident with the table saw. We purchased, uh, I think they were 150 pound brackets, uh, slides for um, the trailer to, to, to mount the fridge and to slide the fridge out to be able to access it. Uh, the 
the 8020, you can't adhere the slides directly to it, so we needed to create the brackets, and that's what the checker plate was for. And uh, so here you can see Jan just measuring up to see uh, what she needs to take off, and uh, and then to start uh, the process of figuring out how to mount the uh, checker plate to the 8020, and then the brackets to the checker plate. If you're interested to know where we got all of our um, 8020 and the bolts and the, and the checker plate and all that sort of stuff, uh, just drop us a line and uh, I'm happy to, to re relay my uh, uh, contacts and uh, where I found everything. It was quite tricky to find the, uh, the nuts and bolts and the extra pieces of the 8020. Remember in earlier videos I had had a bunch of leftover stuff. For the roof of the trailer I chose to use an alu panel in a 5 foot 10 piece and that wasn't actually going to cover the whole top of the roof of the trailer but it was going to cover the bulk of it and then I uh, planned on, uh, you'll see what I did in the future to make that work. Here I am just using a skill saw uh, and a Diablo bit to score through one of the aluminum uh, skins on the alu panel and then what I'm doing is I'm lining it up to the break or to the fold. I think there's a 22 and a half degree fold that we're at there. When I started this trailer, we did a ton of research. We watched a lot of videos. We read as much as we could and uh, it helps to have an engineer as a partner. Uh, we found that we you know, designed the, the axles, the frame, everything. We got a lot of good detail. But then when it came down to installing the uh, little you know, we didn't, we didn't figure out every single detail and we ended up, you know, having to build a lot of things on the fly as we went along, which is, you know, part of the fun is actually thinking, waking up in the middle of the night and going, well, if I do that, that'll work. Um, here, Jen is actually using uh, the, some old um, 3 8 uh, that I bought from uh, Canadian Tire and it's just, or not Canadian Tire, I'm sorry. Um, Home Depot and it's just garbage wood and uh, she went through and installed and, and, and made a box and she actually really took her time and tried to use a regular table saw blade as a dado blade and uh, and had again did a ton of research on how to make a box to put the fridge into. I've installed the roof now, I uh, drilled uh, two holes for the two solar panels. I pulled the 6 aught wire and I pulled it up to these covers, which I still have to adhere down onto the roof, but I'm not in a rush because I still have to put all the aluminum trim on and uh, decide what I'm gonna do to mount the racks. Uh, but most likely I'm gonna use L brackets and mount it directly to the roof. Um, at this point, we're ready to install the, uh, the fan and that's what we're gonna work on now. So I have my two wires, uh, my positive and negative for the, uh, so the fan, the Max Air fan. And I have, this is the roof. We've got metal at 14 and a quarter inches all the way around. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch a hole through here, actually a couple of them with a step drill. And once I have the hole punched through, then I'm going to grab the reciprocating saw and very carefully cut this out. I might actually use a jigsaw, we'll see how it goes. Fits! Yay! Did you do that again? Did you do that again?
Uh, it's gotta be a little bigger. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. That's just perfectly. All right, it's done. So if you look at how we uh, designed this uh, metal frame for the trailer, we, we built the steel hole at about 14 and a half inches so that this would fit exactly onto, onto the roof and we would be able to screw into steel, which is better than screwing into wood or nothing really, because we only have insulation or aluminum and then insulation and then a uh, quarter inch plywood. You don't want to go through that. So ideally this is going to screw into the wood and based on the way that we've set it up, it's going to work perfectly. Let's hope. At this point, all I have to do is apply the butyl tape and I put it over the holes to make sure that when I screw the uh, screws down that the butyl tape will um, basically fill the holes or the screws will fill the holes and the butyl tape will go around it and I'll get perfect adhesion in theory. I used self-tapping screws and uh, just, just drilled them in. I was careful not to over sink them and they bit into the steel uh, fantastic and I got a really really good connection. And then it was time to, to put the fan on, onto the collar. Once I had the fan uh, sitting on the roof, I was able to uh, hook up a battery charger to the uh, electrical uh, panel and then I could uh, wire up the fan and give it a quick test. And you can see that in the video. Uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. We really appreciate that very much. Any questions or concerns about the products that I bought, please send me a uh, message and I will be happy to respond to you anytime. I'm happy to tell you where I get everything I get. So that's it for the show. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. And bye for now.